Mankashevo is a large town of around 100,000 people, set in the far west of Ukraine. Munkashevo is only about an hour away from the Hungarian border. It's clear from spending a short time in the town that there are obvious gaps between the rich and the poor. Another observation is that there is a clear disregard for health and safety. We witnessed scaffolding three storeys high with no handrails, sitting in blocks of wood and tied to the wall with only string. Gas pipes exposed to the heat of the sun and LPG bottles rusty and racked up in the roof of a bus. Talk about a ticking time bomb. On the other hand, there is a sense of freedom about the place which is nice. A freedom that is hard to experience in modern Western Europe. Our leaders feel the need to legislate for every detail of our life and, as it were, wrap us up in cotton wool. This sometimes can make life in the West seem a bit bland in comparison. People are also free to speak out loud in the town centres without fear of persecution. We witnessed a number of people preaching openly and Christian groups doing open-air worship and testimonies. On the edge of town you cross over the railway line and you enter an entirely different place. This camp has around 5,000 Romani gypsies. The majority of the people living here are of Hungarian origin and only a few speak Ukrainian, so they keep very much to themselves. The camp is like a small town with shops, bakehouse, church buildings and a Sunday market. Here there is a massive gap between those with money and those without. On the edge of the camp, there are well-designed houses with large walls, gates, double garages and Mercedes cars in the driveway. Go behind these houses by only one street and you find total poverty. People are living in shelters that we wouldn't put our garden tools in. They have no running water and toilets that are outside and shared by many other people. Some people are trying to get a better standard of living. Robbie has been building a house for two years now and is buying materials as often as he can afford it. He is so close to finishing the house, but it could be another two years before he and his family can make the move. The Christians in the camp are doing their best to encourage education, not only locally in the camp, but also to encourage parents to send their children to state school for a proper education. On the camp they have a schoolhouse where the children who attend the school are educated. The children receive a Bible lesson every day as part of the education programme. There's a daily feeding programme in the school and on the day we visited, the children were eating pizza for the very first time. So you can see our children here, how they are playing, how they are enjoying. We play, just this place is not enough us. So and we, we and the children, we are praying for new place, bigger field, so we can be free because here is a too small but we are enjoy and children enjoy and God bless us so much and we are so thankful for everything what God giving us. Amen. So like we was talking about what is our goal, yes God bless us so much because we have a lot of children who have a desire to study but uh, not always they had the opportunity to, to go to the school or spend time, time there because uh, many of them they have to look after their children home, the smaller children. So, and they don't have uh, really, they're busy with homework 
and the parents not home all day, but uh, uh, he, here they can come and uh, every time and we are teaching them. And many of them they know write and read and they can count. And uh, the biggest thing, they, they love to come here because we love them so much and they love us too. So and we have a lot of activities. We not teach them just uh, how to read and write. We teaching them a Bible, basic things, so they become know Jesus. We teaching uh, them informatic, how to use the computers, and we teaching them. We will start this month uh, teach the music. So and now they are so uh, enthusiastic to study uh, music. So and we very thankful to God He helping us and God bless those who are helping us. Uh, we had a uh, good friends, organizations uh, who are helping to they let us to work with those children because through their help uh, we can do it this. So it's every day we're doing this, every day. <laughs> So I like to come to this school because we are learned. So we have a different kind of teaching, so that's why I like to come here. And we have a games. And what I like to learn so much because we are talking about God. We are learning about God. I, I, come, I come to this school because we are knowing about God many things and we have a different kind of teaching. We, have, we, we learn how to read and how to write as we, we don't know before. And also, also about God, how to follow God. Yo. My, my teacher all the time is talking about God. And we are, we are listening and learning how to, how to behave ourselves. And they are teaching how to follow God and His Spirit. So this is our, our computer class. So we are teaching the children how to use computer because some of the children, they don't know how to use computer because they don't have opportunity at home to have their own. So they are coming every day here to the, our school and we are teaching uh, basic. basic stuff, how to use keyboard and how to write their names and subjects from the Bible. So this is, I hope it will be held in the future to, to use computer <coughs> skills because it's now, now is the time in the world the most, the most important thing if you know the, the computer stuff. So now they are writing down from the Bible subjects, words. Now and after when they are writing down, they have a, like a little gift, 15 minutes to use internet games. And this is the, help them how to grow their, their ideas. The children wanted to sing for us when we were there. They were so excited as they came in and you can see the joy and expressions of sincerity on their faces as they sang to us.
The seed programme started in 2009 with a small investment of only $600. This programme has been so successful that in 2014 a large number of camps have adopted the programme and the investment has grown to $20,000. Я служу города пастор Корчи. Хочу сказать то, что у нас сейчас э, посеяли картошку, огурцы, все э, в селе Галачи. Люди очень благодарны и заинтересованы, чтобы дальше продолжать эту работу. Пусть Бог благословит тех людей, которые помогли этим людям, чтобы восстановиться, чтобы люди имели питание на зиму. Также мы проводили в Ратовце, делали тоже люди благодарны Богу за картошку, за огурцы, за все, что там делалось. И я думаю, что это очень хорошо делать, потому что люди голодуют, люди не имеют что, а через это люди будут иметь кормление и будут иметь благословение. И даже над этим есть рука Божия. Пусть Бог благословит тех людей, которые пожертвовали финансы на это Царство Божие. Я знаю, что мы это сеем, мы будем это понижать. Спасибо, пусть Бог благословит. Аминь. Церковь живого Бога. Я дуже радий за тих людей, які з допомогою обращаються до ромського народу, бо дуже велика допомога для нас. Те, що люди показують нам у даний час, що на, на посив вони раді допомогти, щоб люди розвивалися. И они по-кращему могли достигнуть того життя, что видимо кругом нас. Я благодарю Бога, чтобы Господь их благословил и чтобы они дали могли с нами трудиться на небе Божьем, потому что это Царство Божье. Хай их Бог благословит и далее. Аминь. The food generated from the programme can feed many families over the winter and the excess food is sold at local markets. The money is then used to invest in more seeds and is now becoming a self-sufficient programme and could even become a profitable business in the near future. One of the team fell extremely ill and required treatment. This was a concern, as Sean has a heart condition and is taking a cocktail of pills, which the local doctors did not really understand, so treatment had to be basic. The trip to the hospital has been interesting. We're now here in the hospital grounds, waiting as Sean has been treated. And how it actually works here is they go in and they get a, an assessment, and after the assessment, they are then given what is like a prescription and after the prescription they are then we then have to take it to a pharmacy and we have to pay for the medicine here and after that we then have to take it back to the doctors and the nurses to treat him but some of the medicine that we had to get was not available in one of the pharmacies so we've been to about three different pharmacies one of them here just behind us to try and get them and we then have to pay for it there and then by cash so that we can take it back and it looks like these pharmacies are not part of the hospital they are independent private businesses so basically the the bottom line is if you need treatment you need to pay for it here and then no money no treatment you can get assessed they can tell you what's wrong with you but they just won't treat you and it's a real eye-opener and we were actually chatting about this back home in Scotland and in the UK um, we have a very good healthcare system where the richest to the poorest are treated equally. Having seen what I've seen here in the very short time that we've been here, it makes me grateful for what I've got back home and I think that we are more than blessed and we should appreciate what we have because here people have basically nothing unless they pay. It's as simple as that. It's money before people, it's money before health. There's another camp about 45 minutes away, called the Berigovo Camp. It is very different, and has a programme that runs three days a week. Again, it's mostly children that benefit. 
but the poverty in the Berigovo camp appears to be much greater than that in the Tabor camp, with children that clearly haven't washed in probably months. They have little or no clothes and live in rickety houses. There are piles of rubbish everywhere. This could certainly be described as third world or extreme poverty. The Gypsy Church worked closely with other churches in the main town of Munkashevo. There are two services here every Sunday because the building is not large enough to cope with the growing church. Praise God for this problem. We were told that they were going to be demolishing the building in the next couple of months to build a larger building that would not only accommodate more people on a Sunday but could also be used as an extension for the school during the week. The prayer, worship and preaching was so passionate everywhere we went, we got a real sense that God was not only real to the church, but God was also very present. There was an air of excitement and joy, even though they seemed to have so little. The Christians we met were very, very rich in the Spirit of God, which unfortunately we do not see or experience so much in Western Europe. They have a saying, people in the West are so poor, all they have is money. On the Sunday, there was a visiting preacher from the city of Kiev called Pastor Sergei. We managed to ask him a few questions about what the church and the people in Kiev are experiencing. Sergei, you are a Ukrainian pastor who lives in Kiev, and we heard you speaking tonight at the Gypsy Church in Makachevo. You spoke about the situation in Ukraine and it is very concerning to you. You spoke very passionately about that. What would you like people in Scotland to do in terms of prayer for Kiev and Ukraine? Yes, I would like to ask Scottish people to pray for uh, peace and freedom in Ukraine. You have lived through persecution before under the Soviet Union. The church, do you think that the situation for the church could get worse again in Ukraine if Russia starts to move into the Ukraine over the border? We can see what's going in the Russian Federation right now. The church has not such freedom like we have. Uh, one month ago, we have a conference here in Mukachewa, anniversary for 22 years of Ukrainian yeah. church, which I start. Uh, and we, after conference, we go to city square and we start praying for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And we have guests from Moscow, pastor. He say, it's never allowed to do such prayer mm -hmm. without permission in Russia. You have much bigger freedom in Ukraine than we have in Russia. One thing that I have noticed in the few days that I've been in Ukraine is that there seems to be a real passion, um, a real conviction amongst Christians here. There is an excitement about God, and God seems to be real in the lives of the people that we've seen here. And if there's one thing that I can take back to Scotland, is that God is alive in Ukraine, and God is real. Do you think that the answer in Ukraine is politics, or do you think the answer lies with Jesus? I believe that God is after of history, not Obama, not Angela Merkel. God created history of Ukraine and all world. And answer for situation, what we have in Ukraine is God and his word. First, we need uh, reconciliation. 
mm-hmm. these gods. After, we need uh, to ask forgiveness. Mm-hmm. After forgiveness is coming recon- reconciliation one another. Mm-hmm. And after that, peace will come to Ukraine. So we need to forgive one another, reconcile one another, and to have peace. Okay. Peace, God.